Hunter x Hunter. Episode 1. A 12-year-old boy, Gon, hunts down the monster of the swamp to fulfill the promise with his aunt, Mido, who agreed to allow him to take the hunter exam if he hunts down the beast, but was reluctant to because his father, Ging, once he became a hunter, never returned home. Soon the boy sets off on a boat to the exam site, but the ship hits a storm, which decapacitates most of the people aboard, except for Gon, the unhinged, Kurapika, and the teen who looks too old, Leo Rio. The captain summons the three and asks them reasoning to take the hunter exam, revealing this is a preliminary round for the exam. Gon exclaims that he wants to become a hunter and see what's so special about it that made his father leave his family. Kurapika wants the exact revenge on the criminal group Phantom Troop, who annihilated his Kurda clan. Meanwhile, Leo Rio wants it for the money. The two get into an argument and head to face off on the deck, but that is disturbed when one of the crew members, Katsu, falls off the ship and Gon recklessly jumps after him, making the two catch his legs. The next day, Kurapika and Leo Rio make up, and Captain promises to take them to the port closest to the exam site. Episode 2 From the port, the trio head towards the Sadar tree atop the hill, as the captain advises them to. But they are stopped by an old woman who declares they'll have to pass her quiz, if they wish to move forward. Though the quiz is quite infuriating as it expects the participants to choose between two indispensable things, but they all manage to pass as the right answer was silence. The old lady instructs them to meet the navigators near the tree. By nightfall, they make it there, but realize that the couple living there had been attacked by a shape-shifting creature, Kiriko. Leo Rio treats the man while the others chase after the beast to save the woman it had kidnapped. But all three manage to realize that there are more than one of the shape-shifting creatures. Surprised, the Kiriko laugh and pass the three after admiring their skills and flying them to the exam site because of their ability to recognize that they are just a family of four Kiriko. Episode 3 The next morning, the trio finally arrive at the exam site, a hundred floors below an indistinguishable restaurant in Zaban City. Once outside, they see the vast number of participants and one of them approaches the trio, the rookie crusher, Tompa. He feeds them information on an infamous participant, the eccentric Hisoka, who had attacked an examiner last year and was disqualified. Then he offers them a can of juice laced with laxatives. But Gon and Kurapika realize what's inside and his efforts are wasted. Although they aren't the only rookies who see through his scheme, and one of the rookies, a boy as old as Gon, Kilua, even asks Tompa for another juice after drinking one, explaining that poisons don't work on him. Soon the examiner, Satots, introduces himself and tells the participants to follow him through the tunnel for the first phase of the hunter exam. Episode 4 The examiner continues running for 30 kilometers and the participants start to give in slowly, although this gives time for them to know one another. The two 12-year-old boys get along quite well. Kilua tells Gon that he's taking the exam for fun, and Gon tells him reasoning. Though Kilua is quite surprised at Gon's faith in Leorio, he manages to catch up with Kurapika. The two get talking as well, and the latter explains how the Phantom Troop killed his clan for their crimson eyes. Thus, he wants to become a hunter to eliminate them. Leo Rio explains that his reason is money, because money can cure anyone. Thus, he wants to get the money and become a doctor. Soon, Satots reaches the end of the tunnel. Though, Gon and Kilua are not far behind, as they are the first ones to reach the exit. The examiner explains that they are in Swindler Swamp, so the participants must stay vigilant and follow him closely as creatures here would try to kill them. Episode 5 As they stumble through the swamp, Gon and Kilua decide to run ahead and distance themselves from Hisoka, whose bloodless is exuding all over. Meanwhile, Kurapika and Leo Rio stay behind, although they find themselves in quite the bind as the fog thickens, separating them from others. And they stumble upon Hisako, who's taking out participants trying to hunt him. Meanwhile, Gon, who's worried about his friends, asks Kilua to go on ahead as he heads back and manages to reach Hisoka shortly, stopping him from harming his Leo Rio. Even with his fearless energy, the young boy is unable to do anything, although Hisoka lets him go, exclaiming that Gon and his friends are worthy of facing him. He even offers to carry the unconscious Leo Rio to the finish line. Later, Gon and Kurapika reunite and follow Hisoka's scent, and for the first time in his life, the young boy had learned what fear is. Episode 6 The two soon reach the finish line and reunite with Leo Rio and Kilua. Thus, the second phase of the hunter exams begin, headed by two gourmet hunter, Menshi and Buhara, who explains that the participants have to hunt and cook the second most dangerous pig in the world. Though many participants laugh at the cooking theme, but Menshi is serious. Therefore, everyone gets on catch the pig, but the examiner rejects every single one of their dishes and decides to eliminate everyone. Although that decision is soon reversed by an old man who jumps off an airship, chairman of the hunter association, Nitero. Thus, Menchi redoes the second phase and takes the participants to the split mountain where deep in the ravine,
ravine hangs the eggs of the spider eagle, and the participants have to retrieve them. The gang manages to do so without a hitch, and the second phase concludes with only 42 participants remaining. Episode 7 The participants get on Nitero's airship to head to the site of the third phase of the exam, and during this free time, Gon and Killua decide to explore the ship. While exploring, Gon learns that his friend belongs to the family of assassins, and in order to leave that family, he had to attack his mother and brother. Although the two soon encounter Nitero, who challenges the boy to a game that involves getting a ball from him, and if they do, they'll become hunters right away. The two accept the challenge, but the old man is far too skilled for the young boys, even though he's using only one arm. Even after Killua uses his assassin moves, he hardly scratches the old man, and in frustration leaves, but Gon stays behind. Once outside, the young assassin bumps into two participants and kills them instantly, stating that he might have killed the old man if he decides to take the ball seriously. Meanwhile, Gon manages to force the old man to use his second arm, but falls asleep immediately. Episode 8 The next day, the participants land on the Trick Tower for the third phase of the exam, where they'll have to descend the tower within 72 hours to pass. Atop the tower, the gang ends up in a room after flipping the floor, but the fifth member of their team is Tompa, and together, they take the majority route, where the majority rules what decision they make. They head forward and arrive in a large room where they are to face a group of prisoners, and to progress, they would need beat at least three of them. Whereas the prisoners get a year off their sentence for every hour they delay the participants. Tompa volunteers to face the first prisoner, Ben Dot, sentenced to 199 years for robbery and murder, but he gives up immediately because he would rather mess with the rookies than become a hunter. Up next, the prisoner Sedokan steps onto the arena and Gon faces him. Episode 9 The prisoner proposes a match to see whose candle burns the longest. The young boy innocently chooses the longer candle, but unbeknownst to him, it is covered in oil. Thus, it starts to burn away rapidly. Although Gon improvises and rushes up to Sedokan, blowing his candle and winning the round. For the next round, Kurapika faces the prisoner Majtani, who proposes a death match to decide the winner. To pressurize the frail looking boy, the prisoner boasts the number of people he has killed and reveals that he belongs to the Phantom Troop. Seeing the spider tattoo on his back makes Kurapika's eyes turn crimson from anger, and he punches him in the gut, knocking Majtani out, but not killing him. Kurapika warns the criminal not to pose as troops in front of him ever again, because if he does, he will kill him. He sits in the corner as Majtani lays on the ground. Episode 10 Leo Rio demands for his removal, but another prisoner, Lerud, exclaims that he's still alive, hence the last match hasn't ended. The gang argues what to do, but in the end chooses to wait and see if he is. Elsewhere in the tower, Hisoka encounters the ex-examiner that he attacked in the last year's hunter exam. The man is looking for revenge, but he's no match for Hisoka, and thus after beating him, he becomes the first to pass the third phase. Meanwhile, Leo Rio's patience reaches its limit, and he ends up in a betting round with Leo Root, which if Leo Rio loses, the team loses 50 hours of their time. Firstly, they bet 10 hours on whether Majtani is alive or not, and after checking his nerves, deducing that he's alive, Leo Rio wins. Next, they bet on whether he's unconscious or not. Leo Rout ends up betting 40 hours, but Leo Rio manages to prove that he's conscious and win the bet. Majtani runs away from the arena, not wanting to fight Kurapika. Thus, the score is 2-1 to one in favor of the participants. Episode 11 Leo Rout continues the wager and bets on her gender. Although Leo Rio opts to bet 10 hours on that she's a male for a chance to examine her body. Thus, although winning in his mind, he loses the bet. For the last wager, the two play a classic match of rock-paper-scissors and the prisoner bets 80 hours of her time. After playing some mind games and making Leo Rio panic, she beats him, and thus the participants lose 50 hours of their time. Now the score is 2-2. Two two. For the last round, it's Killua's turn to face the sadistic and psychotic prisoner, Johannes the most infamous mass murderer of Saban City. Even though Leo Rio tries to stop him, the young assassin, without any hesitation, walks onto the platform. And before Johannes could even flinch, Killua removes his heart, and just like that, the prisoner is dead in a matter of a few seconds. Thus, the game ends 3-2 in the participants' favor. Although they still have to spend 50 hours of their penalty before progressing, meanwhile, two more participants, the creepy Gitaraker and Hanzo the ninja, pass the third phase. Episode 12 The gang spends the next 50 hours in a small room, spending their time sleeping and messing with each other. Time passes and finally the door to the room opens. They blitz through several obstacles and with just one hour left, they reach a small room with two doors, one labeled X and the other O. The O door allows all five participants to pass, but it's a long and grueling route which can take 45 hours, while the X door allows only three participants to pass, but it takes only three minutes. The stress causes Tompa to attack Leo Rio, but Gon comes up with an idea. They all select O and dig their way through the wall into Route X. Thus, all of them manage to pass the third phase of the Hunter exams. The 
the end for now.